the, the foundation of what my human life is based on, which for me is about being a link between the spiritual and the physical. Yes. Being a transducer to allow the um, the spiritual to express itself in physical, and and so when my life becomes based on that foundation, it, it changes everything and gives me a lot more purpose beyond beyond the uh, ego based purpose obviously programmed into us by, by our societies. And I, I really resonate with with the work of people who talk about embodiment because it's it's aligned with what I truly believe um, we're here to do, which is to ground spiritual energies to ground spirit in in physical matter and to spiritualize matter yes. so that this universe can keep growing and become become more self-aware and i feel like humanity has been uh given a really important role by whatever you'd like to call that source energy i i normally I, in the book I, I i refer to it as the great spirit or you can use god or brahman or the universe whatever you whatever you want to say yeah. um i believe the task we've agreed to and we've been given by by great spirit is to come here and be that link between spirit and matter and that that to me is uh, manifests itself in the everyday Monday life of human activities, spiritualizing everything we do, yeah. and and you know how do we how do we do that? Well, it's a, it's a lifelong work. It's a lot of work about. It, it's it's a lot. Of, it requires a lot of self work. I I can't start imposing what worked on me on everyone around me, thinking that this is how you need to wake up and this is what you need to do and you need to focus on shadow work because I. I become, you just become a tyrant. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, you start opposing your will. And um, so you have to honor the fact that you're on your own unique journey and that everyone else is on their own unique journey. And and just in in my mind, put seeds of awareness out there. And some might, some of the seeds you put out there might land on fertile soil and help someone transform. And so that's, that's for me, it's that expanding of your awareness that is the, um, is the sign that you're you're spiritually developing and and i guess the side effects of that are definitely um things such as feeling karma being feeling more graceful feeling more creative feeling more joy feeling more um grounded even when the outside world starts to become a bit tumultuous yeah. so so shadow work is a really really challenging and can be a very very painful and extremely messy process like i don't want to sort of like tiptoe around that it can, it can be really really tough in terms of shadow work you don't need, really need to go through life seeking it life will constantly give you the situations the people the events that you need to 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 um trigger you within that yeah that they have the potential they have the potential to catalyze your evolution yes. and it's it's up to you whether you surrender and work with those catalysts or whether you resist them and push them away because the yeah. more we resist them all you're gonna do is send the message to the universe. I need a bigger, more powerful <laughs> to come my way. And so it's like, do we need a little tick? Do we need the universe to give us a little tickle, tickle with a feather to kind of help us become more aware, or do we need it to give us a big hit over the head with a sledgehammer? No, someone's opinion may contradict yours. Where's my friend Alan? It's all about your perspective. Who are we, and what is the nature of this reality? What's up, everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. Super pumped to be talking about free range humans. We have Matthew Stephen joining us on the show. Hi, Matt. Hey, Alan. Thanks so much for having me. I've, um, I've seen quite a few of your interviews before I even met you. So, I'm, um, yeah, I love the content you put out. I'm, I'm really grateful to be on the show. Thank you very much. And I have seen some of your content as well. And when you released the book, I saw it through Tom Montauk's tweet that he wrote the intro for. And yeah. then I, soon as I started reading it, it was one of those page turners. I finished it in a day. I loved it. Um, that link is in the bio and it's seedsofawareness.com.au. And you can find the Free Range Humans book there. You can find Matt's other book there. He was also the author of 365 Days of Wholeness. You can find that there. And I'm so pumped to dive into this with you. Um, we have a lot of topics here. 
So uh, we'll see how, <laughs> how well we can move between them. There's so much good stuff. All right. I want to start with this question. Actually, we're obsessed with this question. We basically ask all of our guests this question. And the question is, what is the point of reality? What's the purpose of this reality? And I feel like we're both along the same lines here. Would you say that it's the evolution of consciousness? Yeah, I mean, obviously, that's, that's quite a deep question. Um, and it, it, it took me three years to sort of put the answer into my book. <laughs> so, to, But, but the, what you just said then um, probably wraps up what I, what I believe really well. I, I do believe this is about evolution of consciousness and, and evolution of the universe. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see if we can kind of gain a little bit of this like consensus around like what the point is uh, yep. and have more children kind of be born into understanding what the point is instead of never ever encountering it by the time they've died. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's great. And well, I think, I think just to, sorry to cut in there. I think, I think it's really important that um, that becomes a key question that humanity starts asking and starts exploring because um, I mean, obviously there's some things like that, that it does become a bit of a personal, I guess, opinion and belief because there's some things that, you know, we, I guess we don't, we can't ever really truly know unless maybe we escape this human shell and, and, and really <laughs> find out. Um, but in terms of, you know, I think our life becomes defined by what we believe in regards to that question. And for me, if, if the universe is about evolution and evolution of consciousness, um, then that, I guess, really defines how I believe my, the, the foundation of what my human life is based on, which for me is about being a link between the spiritual and the physical yes. and the transducer to allow the, um, the spiritual to express itself in physical and, and so when my life becomes based on that foundation, it, it changes everything and gives me a lot more purpose beyond, beyond the uh, ego-based purpose, obviously programmed yes. into us by, by our societies. Yes, yes. So well said. So the more that we can get uh, this idea of the evolution of consciousness being something that is what we think is the point of the reality, the more that we can ground our day-to-day -day habits, actions, patterns in the process of me, myself, doing self-work, inner engineering, mm -hmm. and, be, and anchoring the divine here in the physical on earth. Okay, excellent, excellent. So I want to I say this. I want to see if, um, how, we, how we feel on this as well. Would you say that then this this third density and this is the physical reality of matter that we find ourselves in um and you you call this and bernard gunther tom montauk call this the matrix control system mcs um mm. would you say that this is a perfect harmonic flux between good and evil between a school and a prison to basically be a pressure cooker for the evolution of consciousness. <clears throat> yeah, beautifully said. I mean, I, it's exactly how I see it because I believe it's that friction between those two polarities which creates evolution. And obviously there's that human part of us, there's that part of us that would love for things to just be easy here and for things to just um, settle down and go, go always go the way we want them to. But in, in terms of the uh, bigger, the bigger evolution of consciousness and of ourselves, um, we, we can't get that. We, we need a catalyst for that evolution. And whenever I think of this density we're in and the way it's run and um, how it operates, I, I always think of, say a jungle um let's say the amazon jungle if you go watch a uh, a documentary of the amazon jungle um what you'll see there is the the most perfect conditions for life imaginable in terms of the temperature in terms of the amount of rainfall and humidity and so it's created this container for life but then what you also see is the most unbelievable adaptations of life form you could ever imagine in terms of the adaptations of predators and then the adaptations of prey um, the lengths they've gone to to kind of advance themselves so that they can survive within the Amazon jungle is just unbelievable. You don't see life forms like that really anywhere else on the planet. And it's because of the pressure 
it's because of the um, constant friction between that, those predators and between those preys mm. that creates those adaptations in the plant life, in the insect life, in the um, animal life. And so I believe it's the same here. We, we choose to come down into this density and experience this intense friction, which, which manifests as these evil forces, as this control system, which is constantly testing us, challenging us, prodding every weak point that we have within ourselves. Um, and I believe there's, there's, a, there's a higher purpose to that, which is, which is to help us to grow, which is to um, separate the, I guess you could say the spiritually strong from the, the spiritually uh, maybe not ready in the, or not ready in this life form to sort of um, advance to where, where they're, where they're heading. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, I think it is both a, both a prison and a school. I really like how you also talked about that, that, pressure cooker friction for non-humans as well, for even animals and plants that also experience the predator-prey relationship that's constantly force, forcing function for evolution. Um, super interesting. Um, and okay, uh, I wanna focus on this too. We talked about this just a, a moment ago that um, Sri Aurobindo, someone that we both um, admire a lot, says that um, we are uh, in need of the, uh, the grounding of unity consciousness in the physical world to create the life divine on earth. And um, this is like an idea is like this range of human development. And Ken Wilber has talked about this as well with integral theory. And um, Jean Piaget was talking about this as well. Um, um, Alison Gopnik's talking about this with the very, very early chi a child days. Um, the basically that you, you, if, why don't we talk, you know, we we're talking about every child knowing, well, what about every child knowing that there's this range of human development and you want to get to a point where you know what unity consciousness is and you want to get to a point where you ground that in the physical mm -hmm. and manifest that in your families and your friends and of your everyday interactions. Um, so um, how, yeah, how do you think about that range of human development? <clears throat> yeah. Um, I mean, what, by the way, I just love how we've delved straight into the deep stuff. <laughs> no warming up here. Uh, this is the stuff I love chatting about. Um, I mean, yeah, as you, as you said um, earlier, I think it might have been off camera or maybe, maybe said in the intro that we, we've been influenced by similar people in Bernard Gunther and Tom Montauk. And they've obviously been heavily influenced um, by people like Sri Aurobindo. And the reason I, I really like their work so much is because I feel like they focus on... Um, aspects of spiritual development and human development that I feel a lot of other spiritual movements or practices are missing, which is um, embodiment and which is exactly what you said, which is grounding spiritual energies in, into physical matter. And I, another person who I've recently got into, I'm not sure if you've got into her work, she, a lady called Marion Woodman, who um, is all about embodiment. She, she was a, a Carl Jung analyst. Okay. Um, she, talk, she talks a lot about embodiment and the shadow. Um, she, she passed away not too long ago, but her, her work is just phenomenal. And I, I really resonate with, with the work of people who talk about embodiment because it's, it's aligned with what I truly believe um, we're here to do, which is to ground spiritual energies, to ground spirit in, in physical matter and to spiritualize matter yes. so that this universe can keep growing and become, become more self-aware. And I feel like humanity has been uh, given a really important role by whatever you'd like to call that source energy. I, I normally, I, in the book, I, I, I refer to it as the great spirit, or you can use God or Brahman or the yes. universe, whatever you, whatever you want to say. Yep. Um, I believe the task we've, agreed to and we've been given by by great spirit is to come here and be that link between spirit and matter and that that to me is uh, manifests itself in the everyday monday life of human activities spiritualizing everything we do yeah. and and you know how do we how do we do that well it's a, it's a lifelong work it's a lot of work about it's it's a lot of, it requires a lot of self work and that's that's why i um 
that's why I really resonate with, with Bernard Gunther and Marion Woodman and um, Sri Aurobindo because they're honest in that um, clearing the vessel of all our traumas, of, of yes. integrating our shadow, yes. embody, embodying our spirit um, it is a lot of work. It really is. And so yeah. I guess that where it differs from some spiritual teachings like the New Age where it's all about, it's all about ascension and going higher and it's nearly about denying the body, and and some some religions have even, I guess, pushed abusing the body. You know, self self abuse and flagellation, and and it's and it's been taught in human societies for a long time that the body is sinful, that the body is is gross, and we and we and we are raised in our societies with being taught a lot of shame about who we are and our bodies, and I believe that's part of the agenda of the matrix control system to. Um, keep spirit disconnected from matter so that spirit, the spiritual part of ourselves can be continuously fed on by higher, higher predatory beings. And um, so, yeah, I guess to, to come back to that key point, grounding of those spiritual energies and embodiment is, is what I believe we're here to do. And in terms of how to do that and how that looks on a day-to-day basis, well, that's, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a, a lot of, uh, it's a long conversation. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm super happy that you brought up this embodiment. So what, as you basically get, it's funny cause it actually brings us even to, um, like Isaac Newton and the, and we can talk about this third law of, of classical mechanics with of motion, where you talk about eat every action, having an equal opposite reaction. Mm. And as Sri Aurobindo says that as you go up, you equally go down. So you go mm. down to the depths of hell to yep. be able to go up to the heavens yep. and that it has to be like this process. It's so funny how mm. science and spirit are now, becoming more and more talking about the same things. And you brought this up in free range humans as well. The idea of the quantum theory being such a mind blowing explosion of scientific advancement now where we've, where we realize that the whole idea of what is a multiverse and what is a many worlds and what is all that is and what is so similar to the Tao, God, Brahmin, um, uh, source. It's so interesting how these things can can be portrayed as similar now mm-hmm. as well. So it's 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 the more that we kind of figure out where things like like a Newton's third law of motion can actually work with the spiritual understanding, or where the quantum theory can work with what is God, Brahman, or Tao. I think that that understanding of 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 also. The, not only the human, um, the individual human developmental um, uh, process, but also the collective uh, developmental process is just, that, that's going to be extremely helpful. And I really appreciated how you brought both science and spirituality mm-hmm. in. Um, and I think that's going to be one of the big differentiating factors for artists, uh, authors, scientists, spiritual leaders, is their ability to synthesize those two. Um, m- yeah, moving forward. It's, 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 it's a yin and yang um, mm-hmm. um, of, yeah, of, the big, of the big picture. I think that there is a buffet of union, of possibilities for people, in the sense that, yes, this idea of embodying your process of spiritual self-work into the physical world and kind of basically in a sense you become blissed out joyful peaceful calm in constant harmony with your masculine and feminine you have Mm -hmm. so many of these other ones that that you brought up um the shadow work and shadow integration um a connection to the wholeness of reality that to me the idea is that it's a buffet of options as as though People can take whatever paths they want up this this big mountain. Um, do you see it as well like this big buffet of options that people can explore uh, what works the best for their own um, process of of uh, of spiritual self work and embodiment? Do you feel similarly about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in terms of what we're what we're talking about here, like embodiment and shadow work. Um, there's a lot of different modalities out there and practices that I guess reach the same sort of um, outcomes and, and 
uh, talk about the same sort of things, but just with different titles and different languages. And these are just the terms that resonate with us. And I think um, I, I really like how Krishnamurti talks about how truth is a, is a pathless, um, uh, what, what's the quote he used? Do you remember that one? Truth is a pathless, uh, truth. Uh, I've totally forgotten the uh, quote. But <laughs> let's, let's, I think, I think I'm aware. Let me, let me see if I can find it. Truth is a pathless land. I think, I think that's what I'm talking about. Anyway, truth is he, a pathless land. I don't know. I don't know if that's correct, but he, he's talking about how there's no one system that can work for everyone. And I really, that's what it is. That, it's yeah. so beautiful. That's a good one. Did, yeah. I, did I get, did I get the, the quote right? A pathless land, a dialogue with Jake, with Judy Krishnamurti. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. This, for some reason it didn't sound right coming out, but it was. Um, so I really resonate with what he, what he um, says because I, I believe that we're all being guided in our own way by our own higher spirit in a way that works for us. And when I, when I think about my path to awakening and all the experiences I went through and the challenges and the suffering that I had to go through that was, that was so unique to me and yes. it was so specific to what I needed. And I look back at that and I'm like, there's definitely something guiding me through that process. There's something that, that guided me through that process, but also every time I, I, I was broken down and thought I wasn't going to make it, something appeared, some, some bit of someone or a piece of information or something appeared that was exactly what I needed in that moment. And I can see now that those synchronicities were guiding me and that they were they're guiding you and they're guiding everyone else in our own unique way. And, um, and so that for me, when I, when I think about that, that's why I called my uh, website and blog seeds of awareness. Cause I realized I, I can't start imposing what worked on me on everyone around me thinking that this is how you need to wake up and this is what you need to do. And you need to focus on shadow work because I, I become, you just become a tyrant. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, you start opposing your will. And um, so you have to honor the fact that you're on your own unique journey and that everyone else is on their own unique journey. And, and just in, in my mind, put seeds of awareness out there and some might, some of the seeds you put out there might land on fertile soil and help someone transform. And some might um, take quite a while to, uh, they might be dormant for quite a while within someone's mind before they actually grow. And so um, I, I think that in terms of what you're talking before about that personal evolution that we're going through, for me, how, I'm, the higher or the, the more I've evolved, it's, it's all been based around integration of the shadow. The more I've become self-aware of my, my blind spots and had the courage to sit with and confront um, my programming, my wounds, my traumas, and to actually um, face those things that terrify me the most. Um, the more I've done that, the more I've realized that there are hidden energies within those dark places within me that I'm afraid to go. Yeah. And those energies, uh, when, when you begin unlocking them, all of a sudden this, this energy for daily life and this passion and this creative energy starts flowing out of you. Yeah. And all of a sudden, as you clear your vessel of, its, of, its, of your shadow and more spiritual energy start anchoring into you, your awareness does really start to expand. And I believe what I say in the book is that we have the potential to access that universal mind, that universal consciousness whilst we're in physical matter yes. and, and apply that universal consciousness to our mundane everyday life, our relationships, our, our, our jobs and what we do. Yeah. And, and, and we do the work of spirit that way. Um, but and so that's that's for me it's that expanding of your awareness that is the um is the sign that you're you're spiritually developing and and i guess the side effects of that are definitely um things such as feeling calmer being feeling more graceful feeling more creative feeling more joy feeling more um grounded even when the outside world starts to become a bit tumultuous yeah. so so shadow work is a really really challenging and can be a very very painful and extremely messy process like i don't want to sort of like 
tiptoe around that. Yeah. It, can, it can be really, really tough. And, um, and, and it's difficult to find a, a, a container in our lives where we can actually nurture ourselves and gives ourselves space to do that because this world we're in, apart from right now in this lockdown, it, it generally demands that we live at such a fast pace, such a hectic lifestyle that very few people feel like they can slow down and actually work on themselves. Yeah. Um, but when we do give us that space, it can be very messy. But on the other side of that coin, um, the growth that we get from that is just, is just so worth it in my opinion. Yeah. It's crucial. The economic machinery is just, grrr, just mm. all the time running. And so to take the time to, work on ourselves uh, in all of these, like you said, seeds of awareness. There's all these yeah. different paths, this big buffet of options for people to explore. Um, we, you, something that Dustin DePerna said on our show as well is that you do have to drill down to water, dig down to water, because that's mm -hmm. this idea of sampling. You can, we can get caught up in just it's samples. Yes. Yes. I, I love that one. Um, and so basically, yeah, picking whatever works. But another critical part is that um, the whole idea of if I could only fix that outside of me, then I'll be happy. And mm. it's now becoming more and more frequent that spiritual leaders are, are saying that we're overly obsessed with just saying that it's just this thing. It's my spouse. It's my job. Mm. It's my um, uh it's the country that I'm in and the politics. Um, it's all outside. Let me fix that thing outside. And yep. yeah, versus the idea of doing the actual um, inner engineering. And one of the big things that comes up and you brought this up, you even had to go through a definition of it in your book, which I think is still extremely important. The idea of cognitive dissonance is such a mm. prevalent thing that occurs. Anytime that we're presented with new information, that doesn't fit into our worldview or cognitive schema. Um, we're immediately trying to emotionally stressfully respond to decline that new information versus if we took the time to be like, you know, why is Matt currently telling me that he thinks, you know, this specific thing about, about me, Alan, you know, you've been telling me you've only been sleeping six hours or you haven't been working out or you've been eating not so healthy. And so you're basically helping me get work, you're feeding me that information from a new perspective that helps me go through the process of actually becoming um, healthier. And it's, it's a crucial thing to be able to do is to, to navigate the landscape of new information coming at you. Don't have cognitive dissonance, be receptive towards um, what people are saying and potentially find new ways for you to pursue um, that your own your own evolution. You li you actually go through this in the book too. You give a massive list of health. Detoxifying from negative forces, shattering the problem reaction solution, limbic fear-based trauma conditioning, and that's making us more susceptible to disease and stress. Embarking on quest to artistically express our unique gifts, eating well, fasting, sleeping well, exercising, stretching, moving our bodies, unsubscribing from alcohol, drugs, big pharma, um, the legacy archaic media enterprise, lame. I created a new acronym for it. I will no <laughs> longer be calling it mainstream media. Mainstream media is now this. This is what MSM is now. In my opinion, is all these independent content creators and lame the legacy archaic media enterprise <laughs> is oh, what that is. Um, so you're, you're, you, you gave all these ideas about health. It's a paramount um, aspect of of our moment to moment life. Um, and I really appreciate how you went through that in, you went it through it in great detail about toxicity and even germ theory. You, you really took it to the next level. Like, yo, like you being in peak health basically makes you hella immune. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did you, did, did you want me to elaborate on that? Elaborate on it for us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, how, when I first started awakening, I mean, in my, um, in my, it feels like a past life, but <laughs> for in my twenties, I was a professional athlete here in Australia. And, um, whilst I was, I was fit, uh, I definitely wasn't very healthy. And, um, one of the first things when I, uh, awakened was realizing that I, I really need to cleanse the physical vessel that I'm in because whilst I'm 
whilst I'm addicted, I, I had a, a very long-term sleeping pill addiction. I used to take a lot of um, pharmaceutical drugs for pain and injuries that I used to get and anti-inflammatories, um, binge drinking on alcohol, um, you know, party drugs, just, just processed foods. And a lot of toxicity builds up in the body, which um, I explain in the book is, I believe, is the actual foundation of, of the development of disease. And, and that's going into that theory is probably too, too, too much detail to go into right now. Um, but I, I outlined it in, in detail in the book. And so I guess the first, for me, the first uh, step was, was cleansing the vessel. Um, and, but I, I also started realizing that to, there's, there's different ways to change our habits. We can, we can willfully try and change our habits, which is generally the way our society tries to, people in our society try to improve themselves, which I believe is coming more from that kind of masculine point of view, those, those, um, that, that masculine part of ourselves, which is very willful. So we try to change ourselves through discipline, um, through applying disciplined habits and stuff like that. And I think there's, there's a place for that, but I think it can only... So we can only sustain it for so long. And so I started realizing that if, if I want to change these habits within myself and, and actually bring myself to a place of health and wholeness, I need to look to the deepest source of, as to why these habits have actually came about. And for me, that's all the things that, um, you know, the book, the book goes into, which is understanding the programming we're all subjected to growing up, both the programming within our families we, we grow up and we become a product of our, our family environment and our social environment. But then before we can even think for ourselves, we're sent to the education system. And we're also bombarded by this relentless amount of subliminal um, mind programming from the, the lamestream media and um, <laughs> you know, from, from, um, from, big corp, from big corporations. Um, Yep. A lot of, a lot of big corporations specifically, especially junk food giants target children because they want to, they want to create customers for life. So they, they advertise, they, they target their marketing towards children, which is, which is really insidious. And then, um, and then also a lot of our habits where, where we do them, whether it be through binge drinking or addictions or whether it be through, uh, uh, overeating or, or even, um, you know, undereating like, like things like anorexia, it's often to compensate for, for deep inner wounds that, that are in our shadow that we're not acknowledging. And, and what those wounds are for each person are so unique. Yeah. It, could be, it could be growing up in a fragmented family where there wasn't enough emotional and physical affection and love, or it could be outright physical or emotional abuse, or it could be um, just being uh, things like being bullied at school or, or, the amount of, I guess, trauma we can experience growing up, especially when we're children and we're so sensitive, is is so widespread, and only only we can sort of explore what we've personally gone through, and, and probably in past lives as well. And and that what I that's what I believe is the true source of a lot of these issues that we see manifest outwardly. And so when I started trying to change my habits in my everyday life for quite a few years it was it was through the tony robbins methods and affirmations yes. and 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 trying to willfully discipline myself and it wasn't until years of that just not working for any lengthy period of time did i realize oh my god i need to get to the source of mm. um where my issues are coming from which which for me all most of my issues dated back to the first 10 to 15 years of my life in childhood and I'm still working yep. through a lot of them. And uh, the other thing that really helped me was my relationship with my current wife. I think, I think relationships are an incredible way to do shadow work because yes. I think there's only so much we can do on our own because as, as self-aware and as introspective as we want to be, we, 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 it's difficult. <laughs> to, it's difficult. You, yeah, you, need, you do. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Great. Yeah, because um, it's it's so difficult to be objective when we're analysing ourselves and um, trying to understand ourselves. So when someone else comes along, um, especially in an intimate relationship, yeah. when we inevitably start triggering each other in that relationship, and and this can happen in friendships as well, but it definitely happens more intensely in in romantic relationships. 
Um, and so when I met my wife, we actually remarkably had so many of the same issues. We both had addiction to sleeping pills. Um, she had experienced, um, without going into all of them, we, we, we had quite a few of the same issues. And we started triggering each other a lot and, we, and we're both pretty fiery. We started challenging each other a lot. And that we started realizing that where we were triggering each other was where the work was actually, yep. where, the, where our work was needed. And in, in relationships, it can go either way. You can, you can trigger each other and it turns into explosive fighting and you hate each other forever. Or you can both take a pause and realize that what you're, what you're probably doing is shadow projecting on each other. And if we actually sit down and take a breath and take responsibility for our triggers and our shadow, yeah. the relationship can lead to incredible growth. And so Sandy for Hart no called it a trigger surfing and it's yeah. a special skill to, to, to get accustomed to is that specific thing. When you have that yep. experience with someone that's close to you in that relationship, can yep. you navigate that calmly, skillfully yep. and, and, and see where that takes you? Yeah. Huge. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm so grateful for um, the awareness my wife has brought to me about myself and we've been together nearly seven years and I would say for the first four or five years, she, uh, I was very resistant to what she was trying to um, help me see within myself <laughs> and very, very stubborn. And, um, but eventually, you know, and, and because, of, because we, you know, had so much love for each other and, and through her patience and constant, um, support in helping me become more aware of myself she helped me grow in so many areas that without that relationship i know for a fact i never would have actually um i, I never would have probably grown in those areas and, I, and i've got still got a long way to go i don't want to i don't want to yeah. make it sound like i'm um <laughs> yeah. but the difference is the difference is probably now i'm i'm sort of like in more of a state of humility where i'm aware i've got a long way to go and i'm very receptive to being shown more about myself whenever I can. Whereas back then it was, it was, I was very resistant to it. So the more we can yes, surrender yes. to that process and relationships aren't, you know, relationships aren't the only, like the only way to grow. But once again, going back to that theme earlier in this interview, they're, they're catalysts. Whenever we get, yeah. whenever we get involved in anything that creates that friction, um, it, it can be a catalyst for incredible growth. So I, I really believe in terms of shadow work, you don't need, really need to go through life seeking it life will constantly give you the situations, the people, the events that you need to, to, to um, trigger you within that, yeah. that they have the potential, they have the potential to catalyze your evolution. Yes. And it's, it's up to you whether you surrender and work with those catalysts or whether you resist them and push them away. Cause the yeah. more we resist them, all you're going to do is send the message to the universe. I need a bigger, more powerful <laughs> to come my way. And so it's like, do we need a little tick? Do we need the universe to give us a little tickle, tickle with a feather to kind of help us become more aware? Or do we need it to give us a big hit over the head with a sledgehammer? Yeah. That's, that's what I believe is the in individual choice. Yes. I so, so, so strongly said, okay, so a, a crucial aspect to all these different people that we've been mentioning, and you talk about this in the book quite a bit as well, is the focus on childhood and mm. that um, the more of a, um, of a healthy upbringing that we have, the more um, <clears throat> it's, it's, it, it, it's more conducive for us to unleash our full gifts and self into the mm -hmm. world. But, but also we have basically these instances in our lives, which we could call like cornerstones, let's say, mm -hmm. in our lives, whether it be at age two or age six or age 12 or age whatever, 18. And we have these instances that are called like cornerstones that pretty much a lot of our worldview is kind of built up on top of these. Okay. And mm -hmm. now what what we can do is when we're presented later in our lives with, like you said, either the little tickle of a feather or the big hammer like later on if you don't uh, respond to the tickle of the feather that usually what that's trying to do is it's trying to tickle at one of those cornerstones mm -hmm. and and so if we can recognize that 
um, that this is here to serve me and to help me evolve. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that um, the more that I practice uh, like you said, clearing your vessel, you had so many instances of clearance for yourself to become a healthier, happier, more holistic person. Um, you wrote a whole book on that and that all of us have all of these aspects to our lives that if we, if we clear the vessel, it makes it easier for us to recognize the little tickle mm-hmm. um, of the feather. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about the uh you talk about some book i love this a lot the worldwide theatrical drama and a lot of it is promulgated by the lamestream media that there is an enemy this machiavellian divide and conquer um and it's not just happening foreign geopolitically but it's happening here domestically left versus right uh, Mm. in the u.s um and that we basically um so many people in this like intellectual dark web and whatnot basically talk about it like being a fiddler on an A-frame roof that you, you, you stay right on the center of, of deep nuance and you don't slip down to either one of these extreme sides and that um, the more you can kind of straddle that, the better. Um, I, I have friends now across different countries in the world, China, Saudi Arabia, Russia, Iran, just tons of different countries, they don't believe this, the things that they're taught about the U.S. being their enemy either. Mm. And I think that's very important. You brought, you brought that up too, that it's, it's equally important that people around the world don't believe what their indoctrin, indoctrination um, lamestream media is trying to push, that there are all these enemies around the world. Yeah, expand on that for us. (laughs) Yeah. Well, um, I mean, in the book, I talk at length about, um, what researchers call the matrix control system. And, um, one of the main goals of this matrix control system is to keep us in constant division and conflict. And there's different levels of reasons as to why that is, um, on the basic kind of like, uh, 3d level here in terms of like, the, the global elite, the, the financiers, those, those who have gained an incredible amount of centralized power over this world, um, particularly over the last hundred years, those who run the, basically control the economic system through the Federal Reserve Banks have, have immense power and, and it's, they clearly have an agenda for where they want to take the world. And they're such a tiny percentage of, of people in terms of comparing with the, with the billions of people around the planet that the only way they can control us is through dividing us. And, um, and so they, they subject us to an endless array of, of socially social engineering techniques. What you said before, which is the, the Machiavellian technique, uh, which was coined by a, um, a dictator from Italy or somewhere like that back, back a few hundred years ago called Nicolai Machiavelli. Mm-hmm. And he, um, he talked about how dictators and, and um, people back then could control both sides of a, of a debate um, and, and basically deliberately cause friction um, so that the, the public come to conflict and then they can act like the benevolent third party who has to come in with control systems and, and laws and regulations to keep the peace, <laughs> to keep the peace in order. And you can see that, um, and we, funding both sides of the conflict. Yeah. The they, they would fund, fund both sides. They love the conflict. So we can see that that happens still to this day, but even on a more intense level. So you look at this world and you see we're divided on every level possible. And, and there's constant issues coming up that cr- are creating more conflict, whether it be um, to do with, uh, you know, on a global level, like there's climate change or there's uh, vaccines or there's, um, uh, you know, the feminist movement or there's the transgender movement or there's, um, I'm, I'm forgetting quite a few, but there, there's endless things that are really, you would call them trigger topics. They're constantly through their use of the lamestream media, this global elite 
are constantly putting these topics out into the public that they know get people emotionally rolled up and emotionally heated up and they they create these two different opinions around them <laughs> and they 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 manipulate you they manipulate you to side with it with with a certain opinion and then to fight with everyone else especially on social media they love us getting into conflict on social media um, and they do it with politics, especially with the left and right. Um, and it's all, it's all theater. It's all the game. It's all, a, it's all a load of absolute crap. And, and on the basic third density agenda, we, we have to wake up to that manipulation if we're going to free ourselves from this control system, because as long as we're staying um, divided, then we lose all our power because it's only in unity um, it's only through connectedness and we are all connected on the deepest level anyway, that we, um, that we can, that we can have the power to overcome the systems we're in. Um, and they do it also with the generational gaps. They love turning the baby boomers onto the millennials and the other way around. And it's just, you can, you can seriously, they, 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 they're, they're trying to turn men against women and women against men. Um, there's religions against each other yeah. religions yeah different yeah. There, there are so yeah. many examples of divisions in this world it is just insane and even as you grow up it's it begins when we grow up we're, we're taught we're divided into classrooms we're divided into different schools we're divided into different states and we're and all these different divisions are given identities and you're manipulated to identify with them and yeah. then to yeah. feel that whoever identifies with something else is your enemy and so that is the that is probably the cornerstone of what this divide and of what this control system gets its power from yeah. and um and then but then on a higher level it's my opinion that there are there are also hidden forces that before feed. you get there let me let me get let me because you're about yeah. to get i want to give the preface to where, where you're about to go <laughs> yeah so there's the um <clears throat> on a um quick right before that the there's this idea of inclusive stakeholding versus self-dealing the and and that very closely resonates and that's pro promulgated right now by um june yoon and the yoon family foundation it's an excellent um mm -hmm. check out inclusive stakeholding um that service to other versus service to self sto versus sts and the general idea is that the more that you become in this state of unity consciousness, the more you spend time in the service to other mentality. Mm -hmm. And the self-dealing idea is that you're going to be spending more time trying to service to your own self. And that the more that our social fabric is designed and architected around trying to get more children um, and adults to understand the inclusiveness, the interconnectedness of all beings, then we can more easily get to the service to others. Now, you give this, okay, you have two um, acronyms that you use here. One is NHF, Negative Hostile Forces, and Bernard and um, Tom use these as well, and OEs, which is Occult Entities. You said that these negative forces work through approximately 4 to 6% of the population, which are psychopathics um, people, and that can file under this idea of a cabal or a cult. Um, and that this is an idea of puppeting multinational corporate monopolies using Edward Bernays style tactics of sculpting the perspective of the masses. There's this incredible clip with um, um, from My Dinner with Andre, the movie, where they also talk about the traumatized Stockholm sy syndrome um, population that um, decides to defend the own prison that they've built. Um, mm -hmm. And so elaborate on um, the, the higher dimensional forces channeling through these organic portals of, of people and yeah. Yeah, so um, I mean, yeah, this, these are the sort of topics that can, can seem sort of a bit out there for some people and a bit more like a sci-fi movie or something like that. <laughs> um, but it's my, uh, my belief, my experiences and researchers, researchers led me to the belief that the um the, the people that basically orchestrate and engineer this institutionalized control system we're in which includes you know the government and um military and economic systems and all those sort of things i personally believe that they themselves are um, not on top of the 
hierarchy, the control system hierarchy. And they're either directly controlled or and complete puppets to um, hidden non-physical forces that basically see themselves as the owners and controllers of humanity, kind of like how a farmer would see himself as the owner of his livestock. And that they don't, whilst the psychopaths they use as their puppets on earth have their own agenda, which is generally around power and control and, and complete narcissism and, um, and getting actual pleasure out of just being sadistic and controlling and, and traumatizing others. I believe that these higher predatory forces um, are basically doing this as running this control system as, as a farming operation in order to generate a certain energy that they feed off. And it goes back to that, what we were talking before about the analogy I was using earlier about the jungle, how all life is, is evolved by that friction between predator and prey. And that occurs on every level you see here on the, on the, in the physical world, whether it be the microscopic world, there's predator prey, the insect world, there's predator prey, the animal world, predator prey, the bird world, predator prey. But when you re start realizing that our physical world is such a tiny band with in, ter in terms of what reality actually is and our physical senses that we perceive the world through in these human bodies are so extremely limited in terms of what actual what the frequencies that are out there so much um, more on the electromagnetic spectrum beyond just the visible light and so much more yes. um, clairvoyance and extrasensory perception that exists mm. outside the five senses absolutely and i and i personally believe that a part as part of our as part of this farming operation our our senses have been limited somewhat in terms of our psychic senses and what we're able to perceive um and so through probably most likely through genetic modifications over, over quite a long period of time and so in terms of outside this physical realm we start heading into the astral and and spiritual realms and I believe that there's still that predator prey element that still exists there and that there are predatory non-physical forces that have cut themselves off from the divine source, which is where we all get our energy from. Um, and so just as there are higher positive forces, there are higher negative forces mm -hmm. and basically they, they need to manipulate other beings to manipulate their energy out of them to sustain themselves. Because as I said, they've cut themselves off um, from that original original source of energy. They, they're, they're basically taken a complete service to self path and, and chosen the, the path of evolution towards ultimate, I guess you could call it evil or darkness. And so that's what I believe we start coming to the ultimate um, kind of, I guess, foundation of what, what this planet has been turned into, which a lot of esoteric traditions, which the movies like The Matrix were referring to, have all been talking about for a very long time. But again, I believe that those forces are actually a necessary part of the fabric of this reality and uh, are necessary to be here. Like they're not, I don't believe they're out of place. I don't believe they're... they're yeah, yeah. They provide so a service like, to the evolution. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I believe that in terms of the universe growing and evolving um, and in terms of earth growing and evolving and us being links or transducers between the tr spiritual and the physical world and embodying, embodying spiritual energies, I don't think that evolution would occur without those predatory forces catalyzing, constantly challenging us to grow and evolve. But those predatory forces are also... Um, they're also they've they've been given their own free will so the harm and damage they can do is very real and there's always a chance that the, the experiment that i believe the divine is, has has created in terms of humanity being that highest link between the spiritual and physical there is a chance that it may not succeed and that the, the great spirit may have to start again <laughs> and, and possibly it's, it's tried a few times here on earth and, and hasn't, yeah. hasn't fully succeeded and has to press the reset button. And the more we identify with the spiritual, like in our physical bodies, that can be terrifying. That can be extremely confronting because whilst we're in the physical with the human instincts and the cellular instinctive primitive desire to survive and, and keep, um, 
procreating, that can be terrifying. But the more we identify with the spiritual part of ourselves, the more we can come to acceptance of that and, and realize that all we can do is give it our best shot. All we can do is, is, is do the best we can to be in service of, of our, what we believe our purpose is here. And there's a lot of things actually out of our control that we can only surrender to and have faith in. And, and I believe when we do that, it can take away a lot of fear. The more we identify with that spiritual part of ourselves, the more we are willing to confront and overcome the fear of death. But when we realize that we're actually being fed upon by these higher um, non-physical entities, we can start studying and realizing how they're doing it. We can study and realize how they're actually getting this energy out of us. And we can work on practical things day to day to stop that being siphoned from us. And that energy then, rather than feeding them, yeah. gets transmuted back into your own yes. purpose and your own spiritual path through your creative output and your energy. You, you've all of a sudden got more energy to give to life. You've, because it's not being siphoned away from you. You've got more energy to give to your creative passions, to your family, to your work, to your self-work. Um, yeah. And that's, what I, that's why I think it's important to, to, to discuss and understand what this is so that we can protect ourselves from it and pursue what we're here for. <sighs> you, that's why you give this title too. Um, mm. you, yeah, you give this title um, of free range humans. You say that, you know, life feeds on life, just like we mm -hmm. have our own little chickens and pigs and cows mm. that we have um, under, the, under the impression that they are free to roam and range mm -hmm. and then eventually to slaughter. And yeah. s similarly, humans getting this impression that we are free to roam and range, but why does 50% of our waking hours go to work that we don't even love doing mm -hmm. for money mm -hmm. to impress people we don't even like that whole idea. And then the, and then the, uh, like you said, if we're constantly bombarded with fear and trauma-based programming, we, ex we, we, that life force energy, right? Just like you want to a chicken, you don't want your chicken to get extremely stressed mm -hmm. and then eat it. Just like you don't want, you don't want the, a human to be so, so stressed. So you let them have the idea of free mm -hmm. range. Mm -hmm. and, and then, so I really, I really appreciated that style of, um, of thinking. And if, and just, if people realize the life feeds on life idea, it's like humans not being at the top of the food chain is actually like cosmically, um, mm. beyond what is present in our limited perceptive three dimensional reality. Mm -hmm. It becomes more and more something that we should probe at with science and explore that spiritually mm -hmm. and scientifically um because otherwise we have so much hubris and we just believe that we're at the top we're at the mm -hmm. top we're so awesome humans yep. um and you you also went as far as um i think this is an important thing to bring up on on just a trajectory basis um you know we talked about at the beginning you know what is the point but also how did this all even start because a lot of what we're made to believe is that it's 13.8 billion years old, four and a half billion years ago, the earth is formed. We had this massive Cambrian explosion that happened a couple hundred million years ago after, you know, dinosaurs were absolutely going to roam the planet um, until finally um, asteroid came, wiped them out 66 million years ago, which is what gave room for the human to end up evolving from. You gave, you gave this very interesting scientific example, which I'd never heard of um, that, at that about 6 million years ago or so mark that there was a, a very serious fusion that the, that the, that the, that the chimpanzee, the monkey has mm. a, um, a 48 chromosomes. And we wonder why do we have 46? And it's because they're two A and two B merged into R2. Mm. And I mm -hmm. thought that was a very interesting, there was another protein that you mentioned in there. And I just thought that was very interesting. The idea of intelligent design mm -hmm. is so easily just discredited. Um, but I think it's still important. We can scientifically understand better and yeah. better. And those two realities can, um, can coexist. You get, yeah. Yeah, give us your thinking. And then like, what is the, you know, there's so many people that talk about this whole egg yolk, this whole big chess game, you know, that idea of, you know, the human's, 
And you went, you went into ancient Sumerian culture as well mm. and how um, they had talked about being uh, uh, gold and other life force energies being mined. Um, mm. There's very interesting things that you piece together. I thought, yeah. Great. yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are just the topics that I love exploring because I, I find the more that I delve into the nature of this reality and who we are and what this world is that we're living in, the more... Um, the more I sort of understand, the more I understand, the more I can sort of work towards um, actually like solutions for freeing ourselves. And the, the problem with a lot of people is that a lot of these topics and a lot of these areas are very confronting and they don't want to look into it. They want us to keep living in their little naive bubble and going through life um, with a very small range of perceptions. And that can kind of like, you know that that whole that phrase ignorance is bliss can give us this little naive bubble of bliss but it also leaves us extremely vulnerable and and because our naivety leaves us very vulnerable and exposed to manipulate being manipulated and i think we it's crucial for humanity to overcome that manipulation and that's why in the book i i really try to be as open and upfront about confronting the the um the idea that we're actually, as you said, we're not on top of the food chain. We're not this apex species that we've been told to, that we've been told we are. We're not in this incredible, safe, and secure system and world that a lot of people have been told that they're in. Um, and that the faster we can confront that and realize the incredible manipulation that has been done to us, and that we're actually being um, fed upon. Uh, whilst, as I said, it's very confronting and very terrifying, the far, the faster we can, the more we can confront that, the more the spell that's been put over us can start to break and we can start to actually access uh, the true part of ourselves and delve into, you know, access that part of ourselves that on the, that's on the other side of the shadow and the, and the, the things that we're, that terrify us to confront. And in terms of, what you were talking about before it's you know i love exploring our ancient history because there's so many pieces of the puzzle that are a part of that and in particular looking at our dna i i believe as i explained in the book and as you said before that there's a lot of evidence that our dna has been tampered with and that genetic modifications have actually taken place and in particular the merging of the chromosome 2a and 2b which have been merged together as you said in in chromosome human chromosome number two and it's human chromosome number two that gives us this incredible ability to think like we do this intellect that we have that really does separate us from all other animal life on this planet and but it's how chromosome two came about which is really really interesting mm -hmm. because for it to have happened by chance for the for the chromosome 2a and 2b which are present in chimpanzees to have merged together like they do in humans it it's just the probability is just so ridiculous it it, it probably wouldn't have happened in in millions or billions of years <laughs> and um and the way it's happened so perfectly really points to some intentionality behind it and then there's our ability to talk no other no other animal species on this planet can talk like we do and we're, we're told it's just been part of our natural evolution but we we really haven't been here that long for for unbelievable adaptations and advancements like that to happen and um it's our fox p2 protein that has also undergone crazy adjustments for us to be able to communicate like you and I right, are right now that just really are worth looking more into. There's, there's enough anomalies there. There's yeah. enough craziness about that, that we got to go, well, there's, this is worth us exploring more and using the brilliance of science to find answers, yes. which many, which many people are doing outside the mainstream. And, um, for the Cambrian me, explosion is another one of those moments that um, science is trying to be like, how did that massive explosion of life happen in such mm. a short period of time? Um, yep. 
Yeah, there's, there's, oh, all of the, um, like Graham Hancock's uh, mass mm, explorations into, his work. into archaeology. Yeah. Because there's so many things, um, like Gobekli Tepe, that's yeah, just yeah. completely shattering, um, our, yeah. our perceptions of who we were even just, you know, 12,000 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so for me, when I look into all this stuff, it, it just constantly keeps point, pointing back to the same thing that there is, there is something, manipulating us there's something controlling us and there's something that doesn't want us to know who we are and our history and where we came from it wants to, us to keep us in a very limited range of perception and it wants to keep us extremely ignorant so that we can be continuously manipulated and exploited and as i i keep coming back to the same point it's it's very confronting to to uh face that and um face that possibility because we've been so uh, utterly programmed into this illusion of freedom into, into this illusion that we're living in this safe and secure world that we can trust, trust the leaders around us and trust these systems around us. And to have that illusion broken is, is utterly terrifying for most people. But I don't know we, if it's just me that's looking at um, people becoming uh, hardcore on breaking free of the matrix control system right now. I don't know if it's just me, but it feels like given the Jeffrey Epstein and what happened in the mm -hmm. end of 2019 and given the uh, coronavirus and given um, kind of uh, some of like the, this whole, I, this whole meeting, it's now becoming public with like Davos is now meeting publicly or, you know, mm. not, it's still privately, but now it's not necessarily like, you know, Bilderberg or trilateral commission, but now it's like, Oh yeah, we meet every year anyway. So there's mm. a lot of things where people like James O'Keefe and Alex Jones are now kind of like going in to get these pieces of content, um, that share with people. So I feel like there's this big like movement towards mm what you're talking about regarding people waking up to that make sure it's mm -hmm. control system. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's, I think what's happening is that where all the esoteric traditions and even religions have talked about this time of transition, this point that we're heading towards where um, you could basically call it our last chance or opportunity to become as a species of humanity, to become that link between the, the spirit of, the world of spirit and matter before there's possibly another reset or a new sort of experiment or, or uh, okay. attempt, attempt that it is done. I, I want to ask, I want to ask you this question. You um, think that um, uh, the, 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 the new world order to, totalitarian um, AI tiptoe that's kind of happening with um brain computer interfaces 5g mm -hmm. technologies um genetic engineering all these types of things um um this could be one of those bottlenecks or like fermi filters or resets as people call in the evolution of consciousness where um if we're not which could have happened in the past as well where we're not spiritually or morally or ethically advanced enough and then we have these Oh shit moments. Um, mm. so, so, um, I, I want to, I want to play with you on, on, on this, um, as these major spiritual and esoteric teachings talk about these moments. Um, I want to say that it seems like, um, you did in your book quite a bit. And I know David Icke is right now doing this quite a bit as well. Um, my, my thing is that, um, I think that like science it done spiritually, ethically, morally, philosophically aware and advanced can do things like take your child that is about to get some sort of um, like a single point genetic mutation and they're going to have Down syndrome or some sort of an ailment in their life and we can be smart enough to eradicate that. And mm -hmm. so I think that, of course, with things like 5G, you shouldn't just have this fake race idea economically and 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 put it out there without having these longitudinal tests over five years, 10 years on. And we already saw some on, on mouse studies and what, and what has happened. So I do think the idea of like slow down, spiritually advance yourselves, then release technologies is very important. Mm. Um, but I, I, I don't necessarily can't, I can't really blanket say that it's all um, only bad. And I just want to hear what you think about um, the possibility of evolving aware enough to um, make these technologies 
in a way that actually serves the evolution of consciousness rather than traps us in that matrix control mm. system through the brain computer interfaces and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, when you look more into the nature of these forces that run this control system, you real you realize that being cut off from the, I guess the original great spirit creative force, they, they don't have any, ability to create they don't have any um, creative imagination so what they do what they tend to do is high exploit the human incre the incredible human ability for creativity and imagination so in, especially within their institutions they will get people into them that create all these amazing technologies create all these things that can connect humanity more than ever before and can actually um, be used for amazing purposes, but then they hijack them and subvert them into uh, technologies that they can then use to control. I mean, 5G, I don't have any problem with an, an extra uh, more bandwidth internet that connects us faster and allows us to do more incredible things, but there's no reason it can't be rolled out through fiber optic cables, for example, and have the benefits of it, but without the... Um, the radiation that the towers are going to be shooting off, but that won't happen. Untested millimeter radiation. Untested. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 But, but it's because, and you know, I don't, I don't necessarily have a problem with smart devices that are smart and uh, I guess make our lives more easier on a day-to-day -day basis so that we have to do less laborious mundane um, things and we can focus more on creative out outlets. But, so these are things that I believe humans have created because of our ingenuity and our creative abilities, but then are hijacked by these forces who manipulate them to serve their own agenda, which is all about control and all about centralization of power. So rather than using 5G and these smart devices and all these other things to help improve our lives, they want to use it to centralize power. And so the more we can become savvy about that, and not throw the baby out with the bathwater because technology has made life a lot better. But when we're not aware of these forces who want to exploit it for their own purposes, um, we're just going to keep blindly stepping into the kind of trap that traps that they're setting. And, um, and, but the, the thing is to go back to the point you said earlier, the more that they, the more that they try to push this control system out, the more in our faces it's becoming, the more and more people who, the more and more people are waking up and the more and more people are stopping and actually asking the questions, what, what is going on in our world? And that's where, where we're at right now, I believe, where a lot of people are finally at that point where the spell that's been put over them for so long is starting to break and they're actually going, what, what is going on? There's something going on. And that's, that's where people need to be. And, in terms of whether enough people will wake up fast enough to to move this in another direction or move these top technologies in a direction that actually serve humanity rather than control us yeah. um it, it's it's hard to say it's 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 kind of coming down to the wire a little bit and um yeah time will tell and all we can keep doing is yeah. is what you're doing is is doing your absolute best to get information out there and give people the best chance they can to have to make informed decisions and giving people practical advice on how to develop themselves. That, that's all we all we can really do. And and I want to also say that I think that specifically entrepreneurship is such a massive mm. catalyst of the heart of the world that our hearts know is possible because. Yeah if we continue on the uh, comment section is kind of like all that I like I, you, you said in your, in your book, right. You can give this example. It's the Zazen water filter. Right. Um, mm. And I looked them up and they're very interesting um, company um, with this 10 stage water filtration process. Mm. And the idea is that like, if you yourself believe, and if other people believe that their water supply has fluoride and other chemicals that are harmful to their health in it, first of all, you know, 
become a scientist and begin testing your water and, mm. and begin documenting it, putting the videos up on YouTube, sharing that. Step two, you know, go to the um, go to your spring like you do, your local spring and get water or get the water filter like through Zazen. But what happened was the guy, the guys or girls, the entrepreneurs at Zazen decided enough is enough. We are going to make our own water filter. We are going to become entrepreneurs. We are going to start selling this to people. And that's an example, I think, of, of, of people um, building the future of, mm-hmm. of, of light that they want rather than the dark. And I think mm-hmm. the same thing is true with um, all of the genetic engineering, brain computer interfaces, 5Gs, blah, blahs, all of those things, AR, VRs that are happening, even cryptocurrencies, the idea of, 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 of a fully decentralized mm-hmm. digital currency, it sounds incredible. Um, but again, it's important, like are the people that are at the center of that um, truly spiritually awakened to the complete decentralization of it where you and I are still not being tracked in some sort of a way, um, uh, whereas cash has way less of a b- ability to be tracked. So I think it's such a, a entrepreneurs can and will um, save the world if we really give them the resources um, yep. to artistically express themselves to make that light world that we know is possible. How do you feel? Mm-hmm. About, how do you feel about that? Yeah, absolutely. Like every, every issue I see popping up in the world, whether it be fluoride in the water or whether it be the radiation from 5g towers or um, so many other uh, things that people are concerned about. There's also entrepreneurs creating incredible solutions for it. I mean, I've, I'm already hearing about fire, fire, uh, radiation blocking clothing that's that's been developed. Um, there's um, people I know. I know of. I know of one person. Obviously, it requires a bit of money to do this, but he's built he built his house with a Faraday cage like structure within the whole house. Um, so the whole house is like a 5G blocking house and there's other people who are painting their walls with organite, um, crushed up organite stone in the paint that is a 5G blocker. And so there's there's incredible solutions to a lot of the problems that we face. Uh, but as you said, we just need to support these people who are doing it. And, and it does, it comes from entrepreneurialism. Um, people, people people coming from their own place of creativity and problem solving. And that is definitely what this control system wants to stamp out. It wants all of the creative output and energy of humanity to be controlled by these massive multinational corporations so that the the most brilliant scientists, the most brilliant engineers, the most brilliant developers and technicians and philosophers and thinkers are are being controlled and contained within these corporation corporations and have to are being forced to sing from the same song sheet and are being often often they're intimidated into doing so because you know they're intimidated through having their reputation slandered or they're intimidated by having their funds taken away or maybe their family is threatened or they're threatened and so there's all sorts of ways the system will try to intimidate the brilliant, the most brilliant thinkers and developers of humanity into being in line with the, with the mainstream consensus. And, and that's why it comes down to both the entrepreneurs tapping into their own inner courage to overcome that and not let that stop them from doing what they believe is the right thing to do. But then on the other hand, us as um, people supporting them as well. Yep. and share, sharing their information and looking more into what they're doing and buying their products that we believe in yes. because the amount of people out there finding solutions is just endless. And, and it's, it's really what this, if there's any going to be a revolution, I believe it's going to be a grassroots one that's built from person to person. Yeah. I, I'm so happy that that, that resonated with you like that. It's going to be, mm. um, yeah, that's that's going to be a crucial part of of us moving forward into the light is 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 supporting the um, creative entrepreneurial creations into that space. Um, a bunch of other thoughts um, that I want to list out from what you wrote, and then I'll um, hear your thoughts on it. So, um, a lot of what we were talking about is people waking up in this matrix control system um, have 
believe that um, one of these most pivotal or instrumental events that occurred on the way was the assassination of JFK in 1963, who was trying to blow the lid on the mm. cabal control unit cult. Um, and that one of the most common things that people like Eric Weinstein has been talking about, which is very interesting, is this idea that the purchasing power um, has been just drop down the toilet. We had, um, you know, Tim Blake on our show recently, who's also talked about this, where he in 1970 was super able to, and he, all of his friends were super able to on just one um, father, the male in the family working on once on one salary was able to support the mm. wife, the mother to stay at home, raise the two children. They were able to have a house plus another house um, in mm. the woods, plus a boat uh, at that like lake house um, on one salary. Now both yeah parents are working um, and they can barely make ends meet for even yeah. one um, property. And the general idea, and um, I can, I can put in right here, the, um, the, the chart here, the, the GDP since 1970 has just been continuously going up. Meanwhile, median male income has just been flatlining. And mm -hmm. where is all of the wealth is going to the concentrated 1% of people. And mm -hmm. so, um, <clears throat> You gave these examples. The government has been responsible for over 200 million deaths in the last 100 years, which is insane to think about. And you can think about um, Stalin, Lenin, the Gulag. You can think about Mao. You can think about Pol Pot, Hitler. You can think about all of these types of, of people over the last 100 years. Um, I want to um, touch on this. The idea that it's, it's possible that um, a, um, a future where if you look so far out, this is kind of what I like doing as well. I like thinking about things like what is possible with uh, future technologies that are so advanced, like what happens when we get beyond the speed of light? Is this actually a physical constraint? Mm -hmm. What happens when we unlock our own source code of this reality and understand it at that most fundamental physical level? Can we have warp drives? Star Trek, can we have replicators that do the mass energy equivalence e equals mc squared and can turn um energy into mass into food mm -hmm. and then is that the obsolescence then of money um uh, uh transporters for moving from one place to another like like that so um i i really 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 just adore the idea of both exposing the dark and helping people awaken to that like you do and also empowering the light and having some sort of a goal right this big picture goal in computer science is called the monte carlo tree search that you go and you find something at the end of this tree branch like a fruit and you say that that's the fruit that i want to work towards or that's the fruit that the collective mm -hmm. wants to work towards and that then you get all these entrepreneurial creative solutions going going towards that so in in a sense it's this big merging of of science and spirituality we have now for the longest time had ancient spiritual texts that you that we talked about at the beginning and that you listen in your book that have been talking about what is the god what's god what's Tao, what is brahman um what is all that is or source Mm -hmm. And now science had coming up with quantum theory, also similarly, this universal wave function, this many worlds understanding, parallel universes, multiverse, um, the idea that, that consciousness is so inextricably intertwined with matter and with our life outcomes um, that um, revealed in the double split experiment, which um, we've had several shows on, and I'm glad that you brought that up as well. It does feel like the more that we live in unity consciousness, um, and the more that we ground that um, here and embody that into matter, the more we can create the divine life on earth, the less we can um, be under the forces of the matrix control system and the cabal and the negative occult entities. And that this is just the most beautiful possible thing imaginable is literally this reality. And that, um, we are in a state of constant exploration evolving and that this is just a beautiful nature of, of, of reality. And let's hear your thoughts, um, on kind of what I've said, your closing thoughts, and then we can wrap, um, because this is this has been so awesome, Matt. I'm pumped. Yeah, let me know. What do you think? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it it is really important to be, 
I guess, using the power of our imagination to ponder on the sort of world that we want to bring about. And because, you know, without going into like the new, new the new age has kind of manipulated that whole reality creation concept. But I do believe that we, we do create, um, our mind is very powerful and we do uh, have, a, have a big influence on, on the way reality works through our beliefs and our perceptions. And I think that that's also another thing that's hijacked by the control system, which is why they pummel our minds with an endless array of dystopian, dark movies and TV shows that show a future dystopian world with control, like a you know, totalitarian control system. And because that's the world they want to bring about. That's the world they want to pummel into our minds so that we help actually create that as well. So we sort of subconsciously just think it's inevitable. So I recommend um, kind of staying away from those sort of things as much as possible, uh, not especially, uh, you know, controlling what information reaches your mind, being discerning with what um, TV shows, what movies you watch and, um, you know, especially things like the mainstream media, that's obviously a given. Lamestream, um, yeah. <laughs> lamestream media, sorry. <laughs> but in terms of like, in terms of imagining the exact world that we want to bring about, a world that's based on, um, you know, a deeper spiritual connection and purpose and, and values of truth and connection and service to others, um, how that looks on a day-to-day basis, it, is, it, it, it can be challenging to actually envision. Um, there's actually one, I'm not sure if you've heard of a, a guy named Michael Tallinger. Have you? Yeah, you, yeah, you Ubuntu. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's so good. Yeah, you're right. You're right. On yeah. That. Brought that so up in the book, yeah. I, br- I bring that up now because in terms of explaining that kind of what you call a utopian world or something like that, um, he does an actual, he's actually done an incredible job. So he, he's proposed this, entirely new system called that he calls ubuntu that's based on not based on an economical model at all it's based on what he calls contributionism and in his book ubuntu the way he outlines it and the world he describes that he he envisions coming about i i just really recommend people reading that just to get that image in their minds like it's too too many details for me to explain here but it's I remember reading that being like, oh my God, I've never even thought a world like this is impossible. And I'm so glad that that possibility is just planted in my mind now. Now, I'm always cautious about saying go follow movements like that because unless the people in those sort of movements are grounded in sincere self-work, are grounded in shadow work, are focused on their own inner journey rather than just purely focused on external changes they're trying to make, I can guarantee that there will be forces that will divide and divide that group within and conquer it and um, subvert it, subvert it to another agenda. So I don't think any, any movements, any things are going to work unless everyone involved is, is um, involved in, in sincere self-work and shadow work so that their, their blind spots can't be manipulated and exploited by um, forces that are so good at that. So that's why I always keep coming back to the inner journey. But in terms of actually um, envisioning a world, like you said, that, that Ubuntu movement, I believe, has got a really, really fantastic vision that I highly recommend reading his book. Or he's, he's got a, he outlines it also in a series on Gaia.com yeah. that, that is really, really good if you're a bit more of a visual person. Contributionism. Um, of, um, the, the Venus Project is also another very interesting one. Yeah, that's another that's another really good one. Yeah, and to, yeah, absolutely. You also mentioned Earthships on your in your book. Yeah, yep. yeah. So I'm I'm a really that's another thing. Like you know, the more that these issues keep coming about in our world, and one one issue I that so the more the solutions keep popping up, and one of the biggest issues I've seen pop up in especially in the last fifty to one hundred years is our complete utter dependence on multinational corporations for our resources. So we now depend completely on corporations for our energy, for our food, for our shelter, um, all the basics of, of, of basically human living that in a past time um, would have been up to our own kind of independence to acquire. And there's, there's good and bad to that. The, the, good, the good is that it's, we're, we're comfortable and that we don't have to build all our own things and put out all our daily energy into into survival but the downside is is the centralization of control that has come about with that 
And so these, this concept has been developed by this guy named Michael Reynolds over in America. And he's developed these things called earth ships, which basically are these houses developed from, they're created by, from fully recycled ingredients. And they, once you're in it, they're, they're completely disconnected from the grid. Um, once you're in it, they, they produce their own energy, their own food, their own water, just the most ingenious design. I elaborate them on in the book. And these are the things we need to be looking into and, and, and supporting as much as we can. So that's sort of a world I envision is a world based on true sustainability, not the, not the sustainability that's been hijacked by the uh, kind of climate change movement that's, that's not really about sustainability. That's about centralization of control. I'm talking sustainability where each person is given um, through things like earthships and through things like teaching about um, permaculture and, and growing their own food and, and capturing their own, like getting their own fresh water supply it gives, gives us true independence and autonomy in our lives. And these things, as I, as I said, they're already being developed. We just need to support them. They're not going to be presented to us on the mainstream, on the lamestream nightly news. They're not going to be on the front page of the newspaper. In fact, the amount of resistance Mike Reynolds and his team has got from councils and governments in terms of trying to stop him doing what he's doing, which is just developing off-grid sustainable houses, has been mind-boggling and a clear attempt to stop his progress but so he he's been relentless so i i love seeing people like him and michael tallinger of ubuntu and all these other unbelievable entrepreneurs who are, are, are providing us with solutions they may not be perfect they may need tweaks they may need adjustments but they're there they, they're they're right in front of us and i think those solutions are always going to keep popping up all we need to do is keep doing the self-work in our daily lives so that we have the courage to make the changes in our lives that we need to make. And then that will, that'll inspire our families, inspire the people around us. And it creates this kind of yes. ripple effect throughout humanity. But it, it, it keep, keeps, I keep trying to, whenever, whenever I'm talking about these things, I always try to bring the message back to self responsibility because it's so easy for us to, for people to get so fixated on the external fixes that they forget the responsibility they have in that equation and yeah. and so what happens is we're either if we're if we're so focused on the external we're either waiting for saviors and waiting for people to come save us or when that doesn't happen we just instantly fall into victim mode but when we're when everything we do is based on self-responsibility um it's really nice when external solutions come along but we're not relying on it we're not dependent on it and it and, and it can be challenging when stuff comes along that that um that is is basically uh sends our life into turmoil like this current COVID 19 crisis but we don't fall into victimhood because of it we just keep moving forward with what we know is 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 what we need to do in our day-to-day -day lives so i hope i hope that answers that okay <laughs> yeah yeah Oof. i have uh two um questions that i like asking on the way out to our guests would you say that this is a, uh, a simulation of source? Would you say this reality is a simulation of source? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things pointing towards that, isn't there? Like you can, you can imagine this human body is like a virtual reality suit for spirit. <laughs> and mm. I, I've, I've, tried, I've tried virtual reality before for the first time a year ago. And... Um, and went into a simulated world and all I had on was goggles and, and uh, earplugs and gloves. And so I didn't, I wasn't, didn't have every one of my bodily senses hijacked, just, just those main ones. And I was fully in another world. I was, <laughs> I was so in that world. It was so believable when things came at me, it felt real. So the idea that that's already happened to a degree, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm very open to that possibility the the human body in a lot of ways feels like a, a virtual reality suit yeah yeah so that's a great way to put it and then um the second um question is what do you think is most beautiful Ooh. it's hard to narrow that down just to a single <laughs> thing are you, are you just talking about in life or, or just just anything anything what is most beautiful to you I 
for me, the thing that I always just am in awe and, and inspired by is, is the human spirit. Um, I just think the, the human spirit outside genetic psychopaths, that is <laughs> the, um, the, the human spirit, when, especially when we're not in a state of stress and fight flight and rep, repti activated reptilian brain, which certainly doesn't bring out the best part of ourselves. But when, when, when you see the true human spirit, it is, it is just so like, it kind of like makes my eyes well off a little bit. It's just like, so, um, so much love and care in it. And so much, we, we just um, want to be connected with people and we want to help people and we want to create and we want to experience life. And um, I see, I, I'm always on the lookout for that human spirit coming about out of people yes. it comes out it comes out in times of crisis it comes out in the most unexpected times i sometimes love going you know i've, I've been to a number of music festivals and my main motivation those i love seeing people away from civilization <laughs> camping and you just see their true essence come out and it's so it's really so beautiful so that if i had to choose one thing i'd say i'd think that is it yeah it's beautiful, <laughs> and that, and that's all. That's often that's actually what motivates me a lot as well. Is I just think that this human species, this the human family, is something worth really fighting for. Like yes. we're, I think we're, I think we're incredible. We um, yes. we're, we're we're totally programmed to think the opposite of out of ourselves. We're we're programmed to be feel disempowered and that we're pointless. Like like mainstream science basically tells us we're random where we just we're random bunches of cells that have come together and we're random lumps of flesh and when we die that's it and we're we're all separate from each other and we're here just to toil and labor and there's no higher purpose and it's it's very disempowering but the more you challenge that and look into who's telling us that and why they're telling it the more you realize what they're covering up the truth is extremely empowering and then it's like wow we're actually here for a really important purpose we're really amazing and we're we, our potential is just ridiculous so uh, that's that that sort of um those beliefs fill me with a lot of energy and, and the more i learn about the, hu the true human spirit the more i want to really fight for it oh, i love this matt thank you so much for what a great response. no this worries an epic show yeah no thank you so much i i um yeah, I, I, we, we, as I said at the beginning, we, we really went deep fast and I, and I love that and sort of kept, kept maintained the same level of depth all the way through. No, no easy. And it was sort of like, a form, form. and I, but I, I, I love it. Like, as you know, from the book, that's the book is yeah. like that. Like yes. the whole book is delving into anything and everything. And, um, and I love talking about these things. It fills me with energy and I, I love what you're doing and, and really appreciate you know, you taking the time to, to have me on and, and also reading the book. It, it really means a lot. Yeah. You did a really good job piecing together. This is again, this is again, what we were talking about. These entrepreneurs, these artists, these spiritual leaders can, mm. can we, it, can we really architect that social fabric that inspires people to want to actualize their gifts like you did, where you took this time to put together some beautiful artistic expression that then is going to go resonate with so many people. And that resonated with me so much that I had to do read it in one day and then, and then interview you afterwards. So, um, I, I, I've loved this. This has been awesome. Everyone again, Matt's website, seedsofawareness.com.au. That link is in the bio below. You can find his book, Free Range Humans, Exposing the Matrix Control System and Awakening Your True Self on the website as well. Also, his other book is there as well, 365 Days of Wholeness. And he has a range of other materials as well under, it's the resources tab, right? Is where you have a bunch of these materials. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, under there's, the there's a re resources section with a whole lot of different topics ranging from esotericism spirituality to the new world order agenda to science to personal development and just all the main resources that have that have had the, probably the biggest impact over, on me over the last 10 years listed there so definitely check that out exactly um and that is that is all do support matt support your other people in your communities and your other friends that are artists that are entrepreneurs that are spiritual leaders support them help them flourish you can support our show all of our links are in the bio below where you can support us and 
That is all. Go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. Get to that unity consciousness. Ground that. Embody it in physical reality. We love you very much. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.